One in two of us will develop cancer in our lifetime, so spotting these early signs can save your life. As a doctor, these are the 11 hidden signs and symptoms of cancer that I look for when I see my patients. I'll break it down into parts of the body that cancer can come from, and also the key clues that you can look for. As always, the sooner we notice cancer symptoms, the better, because it means you can treat it earlier. My name is Dr. Khalid. I'm a family doctor from London. Let's dive straight in. So let's start off somewhere very visual and something that I see very often in my clinic, moles. Not the little furry animals, that would be very weird. I'm talking about skin moles. So when should you be worried and what features could you be looking for? Luckily, there is a nice little system that we as doctors use that helps us look for more worrying moles like skin cancers. It's as simple as your ABCs. And what I'll do is on the right side, I'll show you normal looking moles. And on the left side, I'll show you more cancerous looking moles like melanomas. The very first one is A for asymmetry. So if you're looking at the mole in one half of it looks different to the other half, that's a bit of a red flag. B is for the border. So I would be more worried if the border is very irregular and very uneven and very poorly differentiated. C is the color. So if the color is different between different areas, so different shades of brown, darker patches to lighter patches. D is for diameter, so the width of the mole. Usually if it's more than six millimeters, you're at a slightly higher risk. And E is whether the mole is evolving. So is it changing over time? Is it growing rapidly? Is it changing shape? Is there changes in sensation, for example? Now, not all skin cancers are melanomas in the UK. It's about 70% of them, but there are other types of skin cancers and it's worth looking out for other symptoms too. So if you've got a, an area that's not healing, so a, a sore or an ulcer that's not healing, if you get itchy, inflamed areas that are a little bit knobbly or areas that bleed and it doesn't seem to get better, then those are all things I would see your doctor about. The other tip I often give patients that I see in my clinic is make sure whenever you first notice these moles, take a photo and take a series of photos. We now all have smartphones and it's so much easier for us doctors when we look at a catalog of photos and we see the development of the mole over time. Now let's move over to the lungs and the next set of signs and symptoms are about lung cancer, which is number three in terms of the most common cancer in the US, but it's the leading cause of death. So proportionally kills a lot more people. So it's vital to catch it early. And something that really surprised me recently when I was doing the research for this video is right now, up to 20% of people who are diagnosed with lung cancer have never smoked. And that for me was a bit mind blowing because I always associated lung cancer with a smoker's disease. I thought it would be in the 90s kind of percent. So 90% of people, but actually, 20% of people have never smoked, which can mean that there is a bit of a blind spot from medical professionals when it comes to diagnosing. And you can see how if you don't diagnose it early and things are diagnosed later, then people are more likely to pass away. So the key symptom to look out for would be if you have a persistent cough for three weeks or more. Now, if you have a chest infection or a virus, yes, you're gonna get a cough for a week, sometimes two weeks, and sometimes for another residual week after all the infection is settled. But if it's going on for three weeks or more, probably worth seeing a healthcare professional. Also, if you've noticed hard lumps around your ribs, so anything that's like a bony lump, or if you get persistent rib pains, then you may need to get that looked at. And lastly, if you're getting shortness of breath and there's no obvious cause, for example, you've had blood tests and there's no anemia and you've had no asthma, no COPD, no other kind of lung conditions, then it may be something that needs to be further looked at as well. Okay, what we'll do now is move further down to the bowels. And there was a time where bowel cancer was mainly a, a condition of older age, but there is a slight shift nowadays and we are seeing younger and younger people with bowel cancer. And these are the symptoms to look for. So if you've noticed a change in your bowel habits that's going on for more than three weeks, and that could be you could have looser stools or you could be constipated more, if you've noticed that there's blood in your poo, if you are getting unexplained tummy pains or feel very bloated all of the time, maybe you're having some nagging feelings that you're not fully emptying your bowels when you go for a poo. All of these warrant further investigations. And normally what I would do in my clinic is first of all, take a thorough history, looking at whether there are worrying features, family history and other things. 
You would then examine the patient, their abdomen, and maybe do some blood tests. And there is also a specific poo test that can look for early signs of bowel cancer. Of course, if any of these are positive, then more definitive steps in investigation are needed. And usually you would send them to the hospital team for a camera test through the back passage to look for any cancers. Okay, so what I wanna cover now are cancer symptoms that irrespective of where the cancer is in your body, you might get these symptoms. So the first one is unexplained weight loss. As the cancer develops, it's eating up your body's resources as it's growing exponentially and out of normal parameters. And people may develop this weight loss. Also later in cancer, people lose their appetite. So they're not eating much and they're losing their resources. Number two is night sweats. If you're getting drenching night sweats and you're not a menopausal woman, then that can be a warning sign. And certain cancers can release chemicals that can cause these to come on. And lastly, a good rule of thumb is that if you have an unusual lump or swelling in your body and you have no idea what it is, cancer needs to be ruled out, especially harder lumps. I remember a few years ago, I saw a lady in her 60s who just presented after not seeing her doctor for years and years. And I think she was seeing me for something like bloating. But when I had a feel of her tummy, there were multiple rock-like lumps all over, which obviously sent alarm bells for me. And unfortunately, she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, these were metastases, so these weren't even the original cancer. These were the cancer spreading. So hard lumps, any real lumps, probably needs to be seen by a doctor to at least assess it. Okay, on to number five, and it's bleeding. And my rule of thumb is that any blood loss anywhere is a bit of a concern. So blood in your urine, um, Vaginal bleeding in between your periods. Um, vaginal bleeding if you are a postmenopausal woman. Um, rectal bleeding, that's obviously a concern. Um, blood, if you're coughing blood up or vomiting blood, those would be worrying as well. Um, essentially, blood coming out of any orifice of your body, probably need to talk to somebody about that. That should be a good rule of thumb. So why do you get this bleeding? Well, as the cancer grows in each specific area, it can damage the surrounding cells. That in itself can cause bleeding. It can damage blood vessels so they can burst. It also forms its own blood supply because it's trying to pump more nutrients and things like that into itself. So those new blood vessels that are formed are not formed properly as well, so they can burst and be damaged. Okay, let's go further up now. Let's move on to the mouth region. And there are two red flag symptoms I ask my patients about when it comes to symptoms in this region. The very first one is a non-healing mouth ulcer that's been going on for more than three weeks. And the second one is if somebody is having difficulty swallowing. Some cancers can start to block the food pipe depending on where the location is. So some people may feel that solid food gets uh, blocked later, that cancer can start to block liquids as the gap gets smaller and smaller. And also they may get us other symptoms like regurgitating things, bringing things up. Right, as we're now a little bit further down, let's talk about that throat. So often we can get hoarseness of our voice if it's related to a virus like laryngitis. And usually your voice comes back within a few weeks, but if you've got unexplained hoarseness of your voice or croaky voice, and it's ongoing for more than a few weeks, then it's a bit of an alarming symptom, mainly because something could be growing around your vocal cords and could be pressing on them. And that could be affecting how your vocal cords are working and therefore affecting your voice. The next one is unexplained neck lumps, awfulness in the neck. Our thyroid is a gland that sits here and usually you wouldn't really notice it. But if it enlarges, you may notice a bit of fullness, or if it has a nodule, you might notice a lump. So any lumps around the neck, uh, really important to get them checked out. Um, incidentally, one of the common things that I see um, in general practice as a GP is uh, parents that are worried about lumps in children's necks. The majority of those will have a history of the child having a sore throat recently or a cough or cold, and those lumps will be lymph nodes. And again, the key difference is that they go down back to normal within a few weeks. But if there's a lump that is there for more than a few weeks, unexplained, very hard, 
then that needs investigating. Moving further down, number eight is if we develop new signs of indigestion or acid reflux, especially if you're over the age of 50, then this can be a little bit worrying. Indigestion is getting abdominal pain, discomfort, bloating, burping, and wind, whereas acid reflux is that burning sensation that people may get sometimes. Now, if a cancer is in the gastrointestinal tract, it can sometimes affect the passage of food and that can give you these symptoms. As always, it may be worth thinking about a camera check, especially if we are more worried. Um, that's a good investigation to look for cancers uh, in this situation. Usually when somebody has acid reflux and we're not worried, we would think about lifestyle changes, so diet, reducing alcohol, acidity in food and things like that. And then we would try um, a uh, PPI, a type of medication that reduces the acid in our stomach. And if those things don't work, then we think about that camera check to make sure there's nothing else underlying. On to number nine, and it's a bit of a vague symptom, bloating. While the vast majority of patients with bloating will not have anything worrying, they can have things like IBS. Now, bloating is one of those very non-specific symptoms and one that a few medical conditions cause, one of which is ovarian cancer. Now, as doctors, we are not very good at diagnosing ovarian cancer. Often, once we do, it's at very late stages, so we would miss the opportunity to get the right treatment for the patient. And the real reason is it has very vague symptoms and bloating being one of them. And the same can be said about another rare type of cancer called pancreatic cancer, which can also cause bloating. Number 10 is if you suddenly develop yellow skin, especially if you don't have any pain in your abdomen, that this needs to be investigated urgently for liver cancer and pancreatic cancer. There are also more rare blood disorders that can cause this yellow look in your skin. And finally, I think it'll be a good opportunity to talk about pancreatic cancer is the cancer that killed Steve Jobs. And it's one of the most difficult ones to treat because oftentimes by the time you diagnose it, it can be too late. Incidentally, the type of pancreatic cancer that Steve Jobs actually had was treatable by surgery, but unfortunately he declined it at the time. Okay, so we talked about the symptoms to look out for. That was bloating, yellow skin, so jaundice and weight loss. But some people may get a dull ache in their abdomen, which goes all the way towards their back. So it radiates all the way to the back. And you may also get clay-like colored uh, pale stools and darker urine. And also anybody that suddenly develops diabetes over the age of 50 with any of these symptoms or weight loss should be investigated. So onto the most important part here. So I've given you a good overview of all of the important things that I look for when I'm taking a history from a patient, but say you have one of these symptoms, does it guarantee that you have cancer? No. Most of the time when we investigate, the results will come back and there'll be another reason for the symptom or there will be no cause found, but we at least have ruled out cancer. So it's important that if you have any of these symptoms to at least go to your doctor so that they can fully investigate it. Because cancer cases are on the rise and we also know that people who are overweight or obese are more at risk of over 10 different types of cancers. So why are we in the midst of this obesity epidemic? And that is the topic of the next video in which I explore the impact of the food delivery apps on our health and diets. So click here for that one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on that video. Peace out.